Interoperability is a key part of this ecosystem, and mass adoption won't happen without it. It is the great catalyst. Just like how the internet was not mass adopted until TCP IP came along, blockchain networks will not be mass adopted until interoperability comes into play. But what is interoperability? And what does it actually do? And which cryptos should you be investing in? This is what we'll explore in this video. To answer these questions, we've condensed research from these four papers. We won't be going too deeply into technicals. We will just look at the broad implications of the technologies currently out there. We will then look at which of these technologies will most likely be used based on our framework we've built up from previous videos. We will then look at the specific cryptos and projects which use these technologies. By the way guys, here is a list of upcoming content on this channel. Standard disclaimer, the content in this video is for educational purposes only. Let's begin, shall we? So, what is interoperability? Interoperability is around us every day. We know it's doing a good job because we don't even notice it's there. Let me give you an example. Alice is sitting at home in California on her Apple iPhone, connected to an AT&T broadband network using a TP-Link Wi-Fi router. Alice opens her Gmail iOS app and sends an email to Bob in the UK. Bob receives Alice's email on Yahoo Mail on his Google Chrome browser. Bob has an Alienware laptop connected to an EE broadband network using an Ethernet cable connected to his Netgear modem. Did you get it? Using the same example again without interoperability, Alice is sitting at home in California on her Apple iPhone, connected to an Apple broadband network using an Apple Wi-Fi router. Alice opens her Apple Mail iOS app and sends an email to Bob in the UK. Bob receives Alice's email on Apple Mail on his Apple Mail iOS app. Bob also has an Apple iPhone connected to an Apple broadband network using an Apple Wi-Fi router. Do you get it now? Basically, interoperability is the ability for different hardware and software to exchange information freely without any restrictions. If there was no interoperability, then everyone would have to use the exact same system to communicate. On a side note, good lord, can you imagine all those Apple products? So, in crypto, interoperability is the ability for different blockchains to exchange information freely. But why should you care about it? Well, if it's not obvious already, interoperability is really important. The success of blockchain technology depends on it, and many use cases won't be possible without it. Mass adoption definitely won't be possible without it. If there was no interoperability, then everyone would have to use the same blockchain to communicate. That makes very little sense. These days, everyone is creating their own blockchains, which are built for different purposes and use cases. It is highly unlikely there will only be one blockchain that everyone uses for everything, and it's probably incredibly inefficient to do so. Today, just like the pre-TCPIP days of the internet, these blockchain networks do not communicate with each other. They are all mostly siloed in their own ecosystems. Why you ask? Well, because everyone has different ideas and builds their projects different for different use cases. Each crypto potentially has different consensus mechanisms, different semantics, different hashing algorithms built with different languages. Some are private, some are public, so it's no surprise that there is a huge range of different networks. This makes interoperability a complex problem to solve. But if it is solved, and you invest in that project, then I think you're looking at some very tasty returns. Another reason why you should be interested is the fact that most people aren't. You see, most people tend to think they can pick the right project out of thousands and then fall into a self-confirming bias of believing their project will go to the moon. That's not to say they are wrong, and I'm sure many investors are well informed, but this is a beautiful but dizzyingly complex market. If you invest in interoperability, you're saying, I don't need to pick the perfect crypto. I just need to bet that this market will continue to have amazing projects that eventually will need to talk to each other. And this is already happening. 
Some use cases which are only possible with interoperability are CBDCs, supply chains, and sovereign identity, all massive scale use cases. So what is the current landscape of interoperability? We will briefly go through each category of the technologies out there and discuss which ones are most likely to be adopted. A side chain is another blockchain that is connected to the main chain. They can both interoperate with each other through what is called a cross-chain communication protocol. The side chain maintains its own ledger and it can have its own consensus mechanism and native asset. So it's kind of like its own environment separated from the main chain. Side chains require a trusted third party validator to ensure asset transfers between blockchains are enforced and verified with low latency. A federated sidechain is when that third party is split into a group of validators with incentives to keep the system running. Each sidechain is only one-to-one -one with the main chain, but you can build multiple sidechains. They are time consuming and complex to initially build, but after that, anybody can interact with it. It is not completely trustless. You still need to rely on a trusted third party the best being a federated sidechain. Some examples of sidechains or projects which use sidechains are Loom Network, Horizon, RSK, POA, XRPL federated sidechains, Solana Wormhole, which is a sidechain to Ethereum, and all the Polkadot bridges are basically sidechains. Notary schemes involve a notary or an entity that monitors multiple chains and triggers transactions in a chain upon an event taking place on another chain. Examples are Binance, Coinbase, Kraken. Basically, they're intermediaries like centralized exchanges. So they are mostly centralized, but they offer speed and comfort over more decentralized solutions. They allow asset transfers between multiple different blockchains. Hashed time lock contracts. Hash time lock contracts allows transactions of assets in a trustless way. They are essentially programmable escrows, and they are the technology behind atomic swaps. It allows fair exchange without a trusted third party, but it only works if the sender and receiver provide their secret to each other and complete the transaction within the time lock. Both need to be online for this. Each hash time lock contract must be set up individually for each use. It's not interoperability in the sense that data flows freely throughout the networks. Although hash time lock contracts can be chained together, they can be used to create what is called American call options, which are potentially abusable as a free option. So for example, someone exploring the spread of crypto exchange rates, and they're limited to asset transfers. Some examples are decentralized exchanges, the Lightning Network, OneChain, and fusion. Blockchain of blockchains are frameworks that allow the creation of application-specific blockchains that interoperate with each other. So they provide interoperability between blockchains based on the same architecture. For example, Polkadot, Kusama, Akala, Chainlink, Ocean Protocol, Polymesh. However, it is still not interoperability in the truest sense. So for example, to interoperate with EOS, a different blockchain, a mechanism similar to sidechains still needs to be built. Currently, there is the EOS Bifrost Bridge. Some examples of blockchain of blockchains are Ethereum 2.0, Cardano, Polkadot, Solana, Cosmos, Algorand. Trusted relays are entities that redirect transactions from a source blockchain to a target blockchain. They work mainly in private blockchains only because participants using trusted relays need to trust each other that they can relay the information accurately. So they need to know of each other's identities beforehand. Most solutions are only theoretical at the moment, and an example would be Hyperledger Cactus. Blockchain agnostic protocols allow interoperability between multiple different blockchains by providing an abstraction layer. The various blockchains can then settle by using the abstraction layer for accountability. The simplest way to understand what a blockchain agnostic protocol does is that they act kind of like a translator between blockchains. This works with both private and public blockchains. 
Some solutions also lack flexibility to enforce smart contract logic on other blockchains. Some also lack flexibility to transfer non-fungible tokens. Some examples are the Interledger Protocol, Hyperledger Quilt, and Quant Overledger. They also still rely on trusted third parties in a way. For Interledger Protocol, these are the connectors between sender and recipient. And for Quant, this is the Quant Overledger itself, and nodes on the system. Blockchain Migrators allows the migration of a complete state of a blockchain to another blockchain. These are specifically designed for migration in case of disaster or performance issues, and were specifically designed for enterprise use cases. Most solutions are only theoretical at the moment, especially migrating smart contract logic. One example is Hyperledger Cactus. So, as you can see, there exist several technologies, and funnily enough, these exist in silos of their own as well. There are pros and cons for each, and there isn't a one-size-fits-all. The three main takeaways are, almost all technologies still rely on a trusted third party. So, if there was a new technology that allowed trustless third parties, that would be very interesting. Another thing that goes unanswered is that all technologies are used for asset transfers. But what about smart contracts? There needs to be some ability to enforce a smart contract on one blockchain if a condition presents itself on another blockchain. Only one project we could find does this. Also, the biggest challenge today is the lack of standardization across the industry. There needs to be some agreed form of standardization across all blockchains in order for there to be true scalable interoperability. For this to happen, there needs to be some global effort. Similar to how TCPIP was maintained by global organizations like the IETF or ISO. Although, without this, interoperability is still achievable, but with varying degrees of centralization and complexity. Sidechains are most suitable for public blockchains, but creating and maintaining a decentralized application with multiple public and private blockchains becomes a challenge, as you would need to build multiple custom sidechains. This is possible, but it takes time and effort. Blockchain of blockchains solutions make this easier. However, blockchain of blockchains do not offer interoperability in the truest sense. Take Polkadot for example. Unless the ecosystem has a compelling selection of cryptos that fulfills your decentralized app's needs, you would still need to use sidechains. This is not to say there aren't good options to invest in, it's just that the current ecosystems are still very young and competition between them is fierce. So if you want to invest in one, make sure you do your due diligence and find out which one can support itself in this tough market. Hash time lock contracts are also not interoperability in the truest sense. They are essentially contracts agreed upon by the sender and receiver, and so both entities must complete the transaction on agreed upon time frame. So, value does not flow freely between networks here. This is more of a mechanism for trustless trade between two entities. Notary schemes can be disregarded as they are mostly centralized. They are basically centralized exchanges. They aren't the interoperability we're looking for here. Trusted relays are interesting, but are mainly for private blockchains. For public blockchains, this would be a hard sell, as most solutions have a central point of failure, which is the entity doing the relaying. Hence why these are mainly for private blockchains with vetted memberships. Unless there is some sort of trustless decentralized relay, this won't work for public blockchains. Blockchain migrators are also mainly for private blockchains. The need for migration is useful for enterprise use cases. However, most solutions are still theoretical. And with both trusted relays and blockchain migrators, there isn't any project we can realistically invest in, given they are both mainly for private blockchains. This leaves blockchain agnostic protocols, which is the most viable solution for connecting both public and private blockchains. Blockchain agnostic protocols are also easier to use compared to building sidechains. We know that technology always trends towards the most efficient and easy to use solution. A good example is cloud service providers. 
People are free to build their own server architecture, but it means high upfront costs and complex maintenance. So people rather outsource this to cloud service providers. Sidechains takes time to build and are complex operations. If there was no sidechain for your specific use case, then you would probably use a blockchain agnostic protocol first as it's easier. The overall conclusion is that blockchain agnostic protocols are easiest to use, so they will be the most popular. This is then followed by sidechains. Blockchains of blockchains are only good if you dig deep and do the due diligence. So, which cryptos should we be looking to invest in? For blockchain agnostic protocols, there's only a handful of projects. XRP or XLM as a proxy for the Interledger protocol. The Interledger protocol doesn't use XRP or XLM for transactions. It uses any asset and finds the most efficient route from sender to receiver. The most efficient route tends to use assets that are the most liquid. These are generally XRP and XLM. Quant network for the overledger. The overledger is a blockchain operating system that acts as middleware for blockchains. Quant is needed to pay license fees to use overledger. Overledger can then be used to connect private and public blockchains. The beauty of overledger is that it connects legacy systems as well, so it allows the new internet of value to be used with current systems. Another key thing is that this is the only technology which addresses smart contract interoperability. For sidechains, there is one project which stands out, which is Horizon. Horizon is a blockchain which offers out-of-the-box sidechains complete with their own proof-of-stake consensus mechanism and cross-chain protocol called Zendu. These can then be used like glue to allow different blockchains to communicate with each other through the sidechain. Another thing to note is that this seems to be the only sidechain project which has a decentralized third party of validators for the sidechain. Really interesting and it needs a deeper look. For blockchain of blockchains, there are a ton of projects out there, so it's really hard to tell. But following our framework, maybe Solana as it's extremely scalable, which is good for public blockchains. For private blockchains, maybe Algorand, Algorand is also very scalable and their main use cases are currently in enterprise projects. Thank you guys, that's the end of the video. If you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe. I know I've been uh, a little delayed on this video. Um, I try to upload, you know, one video a week, um, but uh, sometimes I get carried away with other projects. Uh, but I really appreciate you sticking around and listening to my videos. Uh, really means a lot. And um, yeah, th thanks for listening. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys next week.